Hello friends, in the previous video we discussed about bacterial cell wall structure. We discussed the general cell wall structure of bacteria. Then we also discussed about the role of function of bacterial cell wall. You can refer my video, the link is given in the description box. In this video we are going to discuss about gram positive and gram negative bacteria and also we will discuss the method of gram staining. So, as mentioned in the previous video, bacteria is of two types on the basis of the cell wall thickness, gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria. And this gram positive and gram negative bacteria is differentiated by gram staining method. So, what is gram staining? It is differential staining technique that differentiates between gram positive and gram negative groups by the color of the cells. So, it is a differential staining method or technique by which we can differentiate between the gram positive and gram negative bacteria depending upon which color the bacterial cells appear when observed under the microscope. Now, let us discuss this gram staining method. In this process crystal violet which is primary stain is first of all added to bacterial cell culture mounted onto the slide then grams iodine is added in order to fix the color of the crystal violet then after a minute bacterial cells are washed off with alcohol at the end saffronin which is secondary stain is added. Then slide is observed under microscope. Two types of cells are observed. Cells which retain the color of the crystal violet and appear blue are gram positive bacteria. And cells which take up the color of the saffronin that is secondary stain and appear pink or red in color are gram negative bacteria. So, what is the basis of this difference or how this is possible or how this happened? This is due to the difference in the cell wall structure of gram positive and gram negative bacteria or we can say that difference in the cell wall thickness of gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Now, let us see the structure of gram positive and gram negative bacteria one by one and try to understand how this gram staining method or technique works on them. So first of all, let us see the cell wall of gram positive bacteria. Cell wall of gram positive bacteria has single thick layer of peptidoglycan which is 20 to 80 nanometer in thickness and the cell wall is composed of basically peptidoglycan also lipid and tachoic acid is present in the form of lipotechoic acid which is covalently bound to peptidoglycan porins are not present on the cell wall and because of this structure or composition of the cell wall during the gram staining method what happens when the crystal violet which is primary stain is added then it is trapped by this peptidoglycan layer and when it is washed with alcohol then this stain is not lost because peptidoglycan does not dissolve in alcohol hence what happens when the secondary stain is added it does not take the pink color of the saffronin because it has already trapped the color of the primary stain that is crystal violet. Hence, when observed under the microscope, gram positive bacterial cells appear blue in color. Now, let us talk about the cell wall of gram negative bacteria. It has thinner layer of peptidoglycan and this peptidoglycan layer is surrounded by a layer of lipoprotein and lipopolysaccharide which is the outer membrane of bacterial cells. So what we can say 
that cell wall of gram negative bacteria is double lead and the cell wall composition is outer membrane made up of lipid and protein or lipoprotein and lipopolysaccharide and the inner layer which is made up of peptidoglycan in the cell wall of gram negative bacteria porins are present and tachoic acid is absent now let us see how gram staining method works on the cells of gram negative bacteria so when the primary stain or the crystal while it is applied it is trapped by the outer membrane of the bacterial cells this outer membrane is made up of lipoprotein and lipopolysaccharide this is followed by the alcohol wash when it is washed with alcohol lipid rich layer dissolves in it because lipid dissolves in alcohol hence what happens primary stain which is trapped by this lipid rich layer is also washed off along with this layer so when secondary stain is applied then this secondary stain is trapped by the peptidoglycan layer present next to the outer membrane so bacterial cells pick up the pink color of the saffronine or secondary stain hence when bacterial cells are observed under microscope these appear pink in color now let us understand the cell wall structure of gram positive and gram negative bacteria with the help of diagram if we see the gram positive bacteria this is the cell wall which is made up of thick layer of peptidoglycan in some of the gram positive bacteria tachoic acid is also present which is covalently attached or bond to the peptidoglycan layer this is the plasma membrane of the gram positive bacterial cells space between the peptidoglycan layer or the cell wall and plasma membrane is known as periplasmic space in case of the gram negative bacteria this is the cell wall this is composed of two layer one is the outer membrane which is composed of lipopolysaccharide and lipoprotein and the inner layer which is composed of thin layer of peptidoglycan so this has double layer and below this plasma membrane is present which is same as the plasma membrane of the gram positive bacteria space between the outer membrane and the peptidoglycan layer and peptidoglycan layer and plasma membrane is known as periplasmic space periplasmic space is more in case of gram negative bacteria compared to the gram positive bacteria now let us discuss the differences between gram positive and gram negative bacteria in gram positive bacteria cell wall is single layered in gram negative bacteria cell wall is double layered in gram positive bacteria outer membrane is absent and because it is double layered hence outer membrane is present in case of gram positive bacteria cell wall is smooth cell wall is straight in case of gram negative bacteria cell wall is wavy and comes in contact with plasma membrane at few places in case of gram positive bacteria peptidoglycan is several layers hence overall thickness of peptidoglycan is more or peptidoglycan is thick layered in case of gram negative bacteria peptidoglycan is single layered therefore thickness of peptidoglycan is less or it is thin layered so in gram positive bacteria thickness of peptidoglycan is 20 to 80 nanometer and murine or peptidoglycan content in the cell wall is 70 to 80% in case of gram negative bacteria thickness of peptidoglycan layer is 8 to 12 nanometer hence peptidoglycan or murine content in cell wall is 10 to 20% in gram positive bacteria periplasmic space is small or less in case of gram negative bacteria periplasmic space is large or more in gram positive bacteria lipid content of wall is quite low 
2 to 5 percent because it does not contain outer membrane. In case of the gram negative bacteria, it has outer membrane and hence lipid content of cell wall is high 15 to 20 percent. In cell wall of gram positive bacteria, porins are absent and in cell wall of gram negative bacteria, porins are present in the outer membrane. In gram positive bacteria, tachoic acid is present. In gram negative bacteria, tachoic acid is absent. Cell wall of gram positive bacteria retains the crystal violet dye and appears blue in color. Gram negative bacteria does not retain the crystal violet dye and appears pink in color, which is the color of secondary stain, safranin. In gram positive bacteria, basal body of flagellum has two rings. In gram negative bacteria, four rings of swelling occur in the basal body of flagellum. In gram positive bacteria, mesosomes are more prominent. In gram negative bacteria, mesosomes are less prominent. Gram positive bacteria are more susceptible to antibiotics. Gram negative bacteria are more resistant to antibiotics. Fewer pathogenic bacteria belongs to gram positive group. Most of the pathogenic bacteria are gram-negative. Gram-positive bacteria produces exotoxins. Gram-negative bacteria produces endotoxins and exotoxins. This is all for today's video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it and subscribe my channel. Thank you.